Welcome back to the Get Loved Up podcast, your number one resource for inspiration and motivation to live your purpose, make healthy living a priority, and thrive doing what you love. I'm your host, Koya Webb, a small town girl who chased her dreams and caught them, a former track and field athlete who healed using spirituality and yoga, and an entrepreneur who didn't let sexual assault racism and insecurities dim her light. And now it's your turn to allow these episodes with some of the top voices in spirituality, wellness, and entrepreneurship to inspire you to thrive. Let's get loved up together. Gabriella Wright is an actress, model, activist, and motivational speaker with longstanding humanitarian engagement. Alongside her Chopra Foundation initiative, Never Alone, and Deepak Chopra, she is the creator, co-host, and executive producer of Never Alone Artists on Thriller. The series brings together popular artists with the Never Alone co-founders to deep dive into their mental space, creating bridges to our collective vulnerability through the art of storytelling. As a lifelong thespian, Gabriella has equal passion for humanitarian causes. She developed Never Alone, a mental well-being and suicide prevention initiative of the Chopra Foundation, which she currently oversees as a co-founder alongside Deepak Chopra and Punacha Machaya. She is an innovator of Mental Hygiene Toolkit, a collection of mind cleansing and self-awareness tools that help individuals nurture their bodies, mind, and spirit while developing inner guidance to consciously choose the best path for their lives. Born from the tragic passing of her sister who took her life in 2018, Gabriella's mission in life has expanded to provide free services to those struggling and to promote healing for those touched by suicide. She will soon also be starring in the indie feature film, I Am Never Alone, in partnership with the Never Alone Initiative, which will be making its film festival rounds in 2022. Gabriella was born in London and raised in the Champagne region of France to video artist and sculptor father, English and Scottish, and marine biologist mother, French, Portuguese, and Mediterranean. Her exposure to creative arts coupled with her family's dedication to nature, eco-friendly and sustainable living, established Gabriella's path from an early age. With a natural convergence in the space, she currently takes up on the planet. Yeah. Gabriella lives a sustainable, mindful, and conscientious lifestyle. She is a vegetarian and only uses natural, cruelty-free makeup products. At the age of 18, she began to study meditation and Qigong as a result of serious trauma. She later went to teach meditation and healing. She takes regular trips to India, Nepal, and Burma for her humanitarian efforts, as well as to work with women who have been victims of sexual and domestic violence. Gabriella regularly visits prisons to work with paroles and lifers teaching meditation. In 2020, Gabriella created Conscious Intent, a production company dedicated to creating docu-style entertainment infused with conscious-driven storytelling. As the industry changes, Gabriella is finding that what once were two sides of her life disconnected have now fused together to create beautiful and enriching stories. Gabriella currently resides in Los Angeles with her 18 year old son and speaks fluent English and French and conversational Spanish and Hindi. Gabriella! <laughs> what a list of accomplishments, girl. Your receipts are a mile long. How are you? Oh, it's so lovely to be here. I'm I'm well. I'm well. How are you? How are I you? am wonderful. And we're so grateful to have you on the Get Loved Up podcast. It's just everything you do is absolutely incredible and profoundly necessary. I mean, do you get tired of holding it all together? Um, that's actually a really good question. Um, it's for, I think because I've been doing this for so long, you know, it, it's been, I think if I didn't have a purpose, I would be very, very miserable. So mm-hmm. I, I rather be completely almost sometimes overwhelmed um, mm-hmm. with the activities that I'm engaged in um, and the initiatives that we've sparked to creation rather than not do anything or not have a purpose, you know? Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah, I think having a purpose is so important. Have you found, because I know a lot, we've talked a lot on the podcast about the balance and knowing just being is enough. Have you ever um, just 
you know, said, you know what, I just need to be today. I can, I can still live my purpose. I've done great things in the world, but today being a mother, being a philanthropist, being an entrepreneur, that I'm just going to breathe and enjoy myself. Yes, I, you know, I do. And I, I, I have, I suppose, you know, we, you, you mentioned in the bio, you have mental hygiene. I have, so, so, so that's one side, but then I have spiritual hygiene, if you could call it that. Um, and so when I'm being, if, if I would say my, if I'm just going to take a day off, all I do is additional to my daily practices, which is meditation, sutras, um, qigong, which I love. Um, I would just extend that period of time. You know, mm-hmm. I yeah. would just make it like instead of like a two hour thing, because I have a Zoom, I have a thing, I have a meeting, I've got to drive into town, you know, whatever, whatever. I would basically extend that time, stay at home and, and just enjoy it for maybe five, six hours. And then I would go into my Shakespeare and do my voice exercises and, and do that even if I'm not working on stage or anything like that, just because it's so... Shakespeare is another, um, he's, a, he's another master of, of human behavior. You know, there's so many keys to our own existence um, as humanity in that work. So, so I suppose my time off or my time being is still being, but it's just being a more, um, I, I just add more time onto that experience. <laughs> I just, love that. I love that. And I feel like it's so important because a lot of us are getting caught up, being overwhelmed now that things are opening back up and we're like, okay, I got to do all the things now that I can do all the things and that we're, we're hearing a lot of people that are, are stressed and overwhelmed. So I want to kind of talk about before we dive into Never Alone, I want to kind of talk about like your grounding, what grounds you when it comes to, to spirituality. Like you said, the spiritual hygiene is different from the mental high, can, can you explain that a little bit d- deeper? I get like, okay, you're going to take your practices longer, but what is spiritual hygiene for you specifically? Like, what do you do with that time? So, I, you know, it's very interesting because I, I, spiritual hygiene for me has been for the last 22 years. So I started meditating at age 18. So spiritual hygiene has had many different um, faces over the last 22 years, right? We, we get to know what, what works for us. We get to know what, what triggers us. We get to know, you know, what, what makes us feel calmer, um, when we're starting a day or how we end our day. So, so for me, spiritual hygiene has now become a way of living and a way of being, Mm -hmm. you know? So instead of being, it being a tool, it's become just how I live my life. And so it's fully, fully integrated in who I am. That doesn't mean I don't make mistakes. That doesn't mean, you know, I, I, I'm not perfect. You know, that, 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 that's human evolution. We all evolve through um, sometimes conflict, sometimes inner conflict. And, and, and so when, when I say I'm, I'm engaged in the spiritual experience of being it's because every morning and every night I make sure I'm connected in this thread from my heart to um to to the world in in a way where I always ask the question how can I listen more deeply how can I help am I on my purpose um and how does that make me feel and and I think those are really important questions when you're on your spiritual journey and at the end of the day, what am I grateful for? And, it, and, and truly those questions have guided me to, to experience the fluctuation of who I am, which is really the essence. And probably you would agree um, that when you ask this question, who am I in meditation? You have all sorts of images that come up, all sorts of sensations, feelings, and thoughts that just come up and, and, and you're all of them. <laughs> yeah. for all of them. Um, and so I, I think, so my spiritual, my spiritual hygiene that was more of a toolkit before has now become a way of living. And, and if I was disconnected from that, that means I'm really disconnected from myself. And I would probably be very, very depressed if mm-hmm. I wasn't living the life I live now, because it's very grounded 
in spirituality. I wouldn't be able to do anything mm-hmm. if I didn't have this grounded practice. Right. What do you feel like has been like the hardest uh, time in your life to get through? So I think, um, God, I think we can all relate to so many. <laughs> There's been a lot of different episodes in my life that have triggered transformation groundly. Um, obviously one of the first, which took me into this path of meditation and, and mindfulness and self-inquiry. Self-inquiry is really important because I feel that once you go through trauma, you need to ask the question, who am I? Am I my trauma or am I the person I was before or am I someone completely new? Mm-hmm. You know? And so my first uh, trauma, I was raped, unfortunately, um, and I wouldn't wish that to anyone. Uh, it's unfortunate the numbers today, one in three women are uh, sexually abused in the world. And, and whether it's rape or anything else, it's still sexually abuse, um, sexual abuse. So point is, is that um, I experienced that when I was 18 and it threw me into a really dark hole of not trusting the world I live in. And when you don't trust the world you live in, you feel completely separate. You feel isolated. I didn't want to dress like a woman. I was dressing like a tomboy. I couldn't walk down the street. I couldn't look at a phone. I was just completely triggered by anything that connected me to a stranger um, or my sense of self as a woman. So that was one of the hardest things. But that triggered me into experiencing, hold on, I get that this is suffering. I'm suffering. I can't suffer like this anymore. I'm going to burn out. I, will, I am not living the life I want to live. And, and I want to be joyful. I experienced a beautiful, joyful teenagehood, you know, at school. And okay, it was hard, but, you know, I w- I'm a creative. I was always a creative. So, so I was on stage playing Shakespeare, this and that. I was joyful. And when I lost my joy, I think that was the hardest moment for me because I had that parameter. I was like, I knew that joy equated my existence. But when I didn't have joy, it was just so gray, so dark. And, and, and I didn't, and you have to make a choice. And I made a choice saying, I don't want to be like this. I don't know how I'm getting out of this, but I don't, I will get out of this. And that, of course, as you know, synchronicity, synchro destiny, when you make that inner commitment, that inner intention, um, in Sanskrit, we call it a sankalpa, the universe conspires to get you out of that and you have to believe it. And, and, and that's how I got involved in meditation. Um, and I met some Tibetan teachers all the way over in New Zealand. I traveled and I was able to be nurtured by a community and by incredible teachers that spoon fed me teachings, but not by preaching not by telling me the teachings, but by being the teaching. They were so calm, so loving, so they didn't care about my story in a good way, meaning they didn't amplify it. They didn't, you know, nurture the, 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 the sadness. They just were neutral in their loving presence. Mm-hmm. And that really healed me because when you go through something, as you probably know, Um, and we're talking about mental health in general, you feel so stigmatized and ashamed to go through something like that. You're like, I am so dirty. I must be so unnecessary on this earth. I mean, like, why would they care? I don't want people to know, you know? So you go through this thing. So you need to have a loving beacon of presence, witnessing awareness, loving awareness. And that's what happened. And And so that was one of the hardest moments in my life. Um, But the beauty of it is that I received teachings, love, and and guidance. And that is now my, who I am today. It wouldn't have happened if I didn't have that. Um, The other moment is, you know, I think a lot of women uh, today experience divorce. And a lot of men do too. And my divorce wasn't an easy one. uh, and and I think it's a very hard thing to go through uh, divorce on a day. I just think it is because it's especially when you have children, it's you're fractalizing, you feel guilty, 
Am I supposed to be selfless for the child or am I supposed to think of my own well-being? And then, you know, conflict, 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 and it's constant uh, manipulation. And if you don't want to do it, be a manipulation, you just, you, you become like this, you have this shield and all there is in, is arrows in it. And you're like, is that, is that how I'm supposed to live? And you still <laughs> meditate every day and you still do your thing. And you're just like, how long is this going to last? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, so, but you know, all these are human experiences, right? I'm not sharing anything that I, everyone has experienced conflict. It just has a different face. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And it's so important. I'm glad you brought up sexual assault because like you said, one in three women. And I just experienced being touched inappropriately by my massage therapist and like the trauma it brought up from last past experiences and the what you go through. And people can never understand how deep it is when you are wounded in that way. And like you said, the trust that you lose in people, um, it could even be family family members, it, you know, just how long it takes to heal. So I'm glad you brought that up and how you recovered was actually just being nurtured by other people and people really destigmatizing that, that shame and guilt that you feel inside. Naturally, most of us do who have experienced that kind of abuse. Um, you feel like somehow it was your fault or something was done wrong. But like you said, when you're able to just be loved and allow yourself to be loved and poured into and not judged or not made wrong, it is the most nurturing thing. So I know a lot of people listening, you know, mm. um, you know, one out of three of the people listening are going to be able to relate to that story. And I think it was so um, important. And I'm really glad that you shared that because you need to get nurtured and, and, and put around people that, that care for you and that can let you know that you are enough and you are valuable. So yeah. thank you so much for sharing that. And also about the divorce. I mean, I haven't been married and I, if there's so much fear because I've seen so much abuse within my family, within other relationships, and I'm totally aware it's fear. Wrote yeah. a book on fear, but still cannot get past it because of abuse. And so I'm glad that you shared that as well, because it's not easy. And I think the more that we talk about it, the more that we can remove the guilt and shame. Absolutely. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. And you know what? The truth is, life is life is supposed to be experienced and life is experienced and so it's not a fixed reality we kind of think we've been bored up that reality is fixed it is a moving experience it's full of moving experiencers <laughs> and so and so we we have to accept that you know sometimes we can't live happily ever after with this one person that you thought was the person and 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 you know it's a lot of growth that comes that and, and i was going to say one of my biggest teachers because this lasted over a period of time and by the way my ex-husband and i are great friends now you know so but but it's just to illustrate a journey he was my greatest teacher because it was very hard you know mm -hmm. in and out of court this and that custody battle this you know you're like why? Why is this necessary? We love the same child, you know? <laughs> it's like, right. So, but the truth is there is also an end to suffering as well. There's an end to conflict. Conflict cannot go on. It's not sustainable either. So, so it's, it's the same thing. It's two sides of the same point. Love when it's conditional is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, conflict when it's conditional is not sustainable. Right. Meaning, you know, there is an end to everything. But but that's part of life, right? And I'm sure everyone wants to hear. So how did you, after this, you know, hard relationship and then divorce, how did you come to being good friends? I, I think that's always a fantastic story because some people are like, I never want to see your face again. <laughs> you have a child, but having a child and co-parenting is different than good friends. So I would love to hear how you heal through this journey. The truth is, I think, actually, we speak about this a lot at the foundation, and it's one of the things that, um, a, a technique that I've applied, and, and this is Deepak's technique, actually, um, but we've turned it into the love in action. Um, um, I would say it's a, it's a love in action 
movement and exercise that we use. And when you use it over time, it's really relevant to any situation. Mm -hmm. And so it's called the four A's. And so all of these A's, so the first one is attention. I brought attention to it. It was bothering me. I was like, I'm not going to face it. You know, when you don't want to face something, you just like put it in the back and it's just like this mosquito in the back and you're just used to the sound of the the, the mosquito and you're just living with it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? Let me put my attention to this because obviously we're not hearing each other. We're not. We're really not. So I put my attention. Then I was like, what can I appreciate? Second day, what can I appreciate in this? Well, the truth is I have an amazing son. You know what? I have an amazing child. We have an amazing child. In our strange ways, we're both amazing parents. We have different styles of parenting, but we're both, we both have incredible input into this young um, child's mind. Mm-hmm. The third A is affection. How can I show affection to this conflict? How can I actually just be more aware so that I'm not giving hinges for the, the person to hold on to? you know, Mm. that aggravates that person. So I looked at that and I was like, you know what? Maybe I need to spend a little more time listening to him instead of putting the phone in a flower pot every time he calls me. (laughs) 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 Right? And the the last A is acceptance. And you know what? I fully accepted everything that I didn't like Mm. about this person and the situation and how that person was making me feel. Because obviously, if that was making me feel that way, that means that I was looking a certain way to him. We have to remember everyone is our each other's mirror. So, and you know what? As soon as I did that, it took time. I'm not saying it was overnight. But as soon as I did that, one sudden day, he called me and he said, I just wanted to say sorry. Mm. After 10 years, I just wanted to say sorry. Wow. I'm sorry for disrespecting you. Sorry if I hurt you. We have mm. a wonderful child. Let's mm. just make sure we get him out of, you know, out of the stable, <laughs> so to say, in, in together. And you know what? That's fine. I fully accepted it. I, of course, completely broke down because to, to hear, you know, that after a long time, you're like, wow, I'm not crazy. You know, wow, I'm not you know, it's good that I, I believe, I, I believe in the work. So I believe whatever work that you're not, your partner or your ex-partner is not seeing, it's all about you anyway. Your spiritual life is all about you. And that spiritual life radiates to your environment. So yes, this, the harder the conflict, the more you work on you. <laughs> it's, it's that like, part. That like, part. <laughs> you know? Yeah. The more conflict you have in your life, the more you work on yourself, the more you spend time on yourself, the more you meditate, the more you create self-awareness, the more you, because you know what? It's not about anyone else. It's mm-hmm. about you and how you navigate it. And then yeah. people transform. And then that's, that's kind of the cherry on the cake. You know, that's the cherry on the cake, but you're not doing it for people to transform. You're doing it for your experience of reality so that you can be free from the conditioned mind, from the conditioned reality, from the society that is fixed so that you can be free and navigate and experience your own freedom and self-expression. I love that. The four A's. I love that. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks, Deepak Chopra. Like, I think we can all resonate with that and really take radical responsibility. And that's what it sounds like that you did is even though you're experiencing this, this really hard time, it's like, you know what, I'm going to take responsibility and do what I can do and let the chips fall where they may, which I think is very, very powerful. And now I kind of want to talk about like what you built, especially um, with Never Alone. Can you talk a little bit about the inspiration behind that and, and what kind of impact it's making today? Yes. Thank you so much. So Never Alone is, um, actually, I'm going to say something that I say on the, on the introduction to the, the, our, our new series, Never Alone Artists. But I, I said Never Alone is a love story. Mm-hmm. And, and it's a love story because my sister died by suicide. And it's an, it's an homage 
to who she is and but also to all of the others who have experienced um, the depth of the dark night of the soul mm -hmm. and and how that dark night of the soul didn't see the light and unfortunately they lost their lives to suicide and and so I want to it's it's a way of honoring um, her but honoring a collective that has passed away um, so that all of the remaining family members and this collective in this life as we so see it and perceive it um, feel supported know that they're not alone um, know that uh, they are on a journey to healing and that they in turn can help others so that they are not victims of their own mental distress. And so for me, it's, it's obviously very close to heart. Uh, it's, it's a journey um, and it, it's a vision. You know, I would like that the suicide rate uh, not be so high. Of prior pandemic, every 40 seconds, someone died by suicide. You know, now after pandemic, I don't even know what the new stats are. They keep on fluctuating, but I'm presuming it's, you know, lower in the sense, maybe it's every 30 seconds. And that's daunting to me to know yeah. that someone in the world is dying so, um, so frequently because of their mental distress, because of their not relating to reality, because of, of, of inner conflict, because of inner sadness. So, so this initiative that was co-founded by Dr. Deepak Chopra, Punacha Machai and myself, um, was inspired by my personal story with my sister. Because as you just said in the opening, I have experience in mindfulness, in charities, in starting initiatives. And so for me, this was, this was one that obviously I didn't see it coming. I didn't see that my sister would die. She's a recording artist and I still use the word present because music never dies. You yeah. Know? We, music never dies, lyrics are immortal and mm -hmm. our spirits are immortal. You know, they just they just have different forms. So ultimately, I know she's with me. It took me a long time to get there to know mm -hmm. that she's with me because we have these different stages of grief and we have to respect these stages of grief. They're part of life. They're part of letting go. Mm -hmm. And 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 so right now I've accepted it and never alone building never alone over the last two years um, has has not only healed me, it's a healing process for my family as well and for a collective to find themselves. So our goal here is to democratize access to resources, mental hygiene resources, mental health resources, to be able to create an alliance of organizations, not only our own, but other organizations to showcase their work as well, because mental health, it's not a one-stop shop. Everyone has a solution. It's all about how, how, do, how can people access all of these different tools and solutions? Maybe, you know, the future of psychedelics might help, might help someone. Maybe it's a service dog for a veteran. You know, maybe it's an intense meditation and mindfulness um, practice with someone else. So there's all these different levels of one's mm -hmm. mental health that and, and one's mental well-being that we would like to address. Um, we're putting together a platform. During the pandemic, we actually had an AI emotional chatbot named after my um, sister called Peewee, which is her nickname. Um, um, I know, and, and I just laugh because it's so cute. So, <laughs> so, so um, and, and this AI emotional chatbot, uh, there were 17 million messages exchanged on the chatbot. It was a free service. Um, and right now we're upgrading her um, so that she can be more on the well-being side for mental well-being on all sides instead of looking at suicide prevention as well. We want to look at it more of a, a grander, grander, I would say, envelope so that she can, the, the, the AI emotional chatbot can constantly be engaged with you, um, not only mm -hmm. for just specific prevention, but mental well-being as a journey to mm -hmm. self. So, um, so having said all that, we use technology to deploy information. We also creating programs. There's a program called Freedom from Suffering that we're mm -hmm. writing with Deepak. Uh, one of the first modules will be coming out in two months. Um, and that's called Peace is the Way. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so there's several layers, you know, there's so many layers to this part of one of the offerings is, is, is never alone artists, which is a series a 20 minute episodic series. We launched on Trilla because that was a beautiful demographic that we felt, uh, could respond to this content and, and the need and the necessity to destigmatize. We've realized that part of the problem is, is also telling it, showing, being able to speak about it in a safe place. And we want all of these social platforms to become safe places again. Obviously, that's a wish. <laughs> There's a lot of work to do, you know, but 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 we would like to engage on that journey as well. So it's a beginning. Everything is a beginning. We're on a path. We don't know where we're going. We have a vision, but it's thanks to all of us all of you, you included, that we can be on this journey as a collective because because we do need to take care of our own selves in a grander way. We need to start caring for each other. We really yes, We really do. So I think that, wow, I mean, there's so much in that. And I think one of the main things is that people have a place to go, you know, when they're not feeling okay. And also, like you said, it's before it gets to that level. And I think that's really important. So I'm I'm excited to hear about the upgrade because I feel like there's so much nurturing that we need as stress increases, as we start to move about the earth and still are experiencing high levels of, of stress and of disconnection from each other. And I feel like the first step is that acknowledgement, like you said, just acknowledging, hey, this is a problem and this is what we're doing about it. So thank you so much for just being part of the solution and honoring your sister in that way, because um, I know it's not easy. And as someone who has had, you know, suicidal ideation, I know like you never can really grasp what's happening or how it's happening. There's never really a clear pinpoint answer. It's just something you have to nurture. You have to identify, acknowledge and nurture um, so it doesn't go to the darkest dark of, that it could possibly go. So um, for anyone listening um, that feels like, man, things are really dark right now it can be light you know it doesn't have to be over there's always light and reaching out and talking about it and telling someone and getting the help and support you need like with programs like never alone is the light at the end of the tunnel so it's incredible so true and we have so many free resources for those who are listening we have annual summits we have 150 plus speakers you can find what you want. And all of this will be aggregated on our platform that it will be free. Everything that we do is free. Um, awesome. I want to make sure that um, it, it's because it's important. You know, we, yeah. we have to raise the money for it, but that's our job. That's not right. your job. You right. go enjoy everything because this is, because, you know, the thing with mental health, it's expensive. In this country, it's expensive. In France, there's not enough therapists. In India, there's only 5,000 therapists for a billion people. Like, what are we talking about? You know, like, you know, it's like, so we have to be a bit creative. All of us need to be creative to help each other. Yeah. And, 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 and And that's really an important thing. You know, we have to stop living in siloed realities. Right, exactly. And we will definitely include all the links in the show notes, because I think that is really important, because at the end of the day, the government and all the world that we live in is creating the mental stress in the first place. So for us to take that money and recycle it and putting back into people that are having a hard time dealing with the reality that we all co-created. I think that is working out how it should, you know, it shouldn't be that not only can someone be overwhelmed by mental stress, but then they have the financial stress stress of not getting, being able to get the help and support that they need. Absolutely. And you know what? I would love to live in a world where all of this stuff is free, that it's taught in schools. Things are starting to change, but you know, like it's going to take time, but it's our generations like you, me and listeners that need to become leaders in this, because otherwise our our world is just going to be so uh, born in, in, in stress, stress. Mm -hmm. yeah period absolutely and it's so funny that you said like I want to live in the world because that's one of the questions I love to ask many of my guests like if this could be Gabriella's world like what would it look like oh I love that question um what would it look like uh 
I mean, I would love a world where there's, there's one thing that I've always had. I've always deemed myself very, very lucky because I have two passports. I'm, I have a British passport and I have a French passport. And thanks to the British pa passport, I've been able to travel in, I would say, Commonwealth countries. And in the French, thanks to the French uh, passport, I've been able to travel in the Middle East with ease and all of these different countries. And then, but I know I'm lucky. Mm. I would like, in a world that I would like to live in, I would like there to be no frontiers. I would like people to exchange each other's culture freely. I would love the free exchange of how human beings just migrate from one place to another, that there's no restrictions, no fear of the other because they have a different type of religion or culture or they, I, I would like to see inclusivity. I would like to all of a sudden go to, you know, Mongolia and experience that without any, any um, stops and regulations and this and that. And then I would also like the Mongolians to come here. And if they like it, they stay for a while. And if they, you know, if they like, they might not like it. They might think that this American culture sucks in all honesty <laughs> and then go back, you know? So all of these foreign policies of like restricting immigration, um, I, I find that so sad because I don't find it culturally rich, you know, and I love, I love humanity. Mm -hmm. I love the diverse cultures that we are. And I love learning about other people, other mm -hmm. ways of living. So for me in the perfect world, everyone would be able to travel freely without restriction. There's no passports. Um, I, at school, we would be learning each other's culture. Because I think if we have an exchange, we won't have to be so on the nose about mental distress. Right. Because mental stress and mental distress comes from a lack of, of, of experiencing people and experiencing ourselves as a broader collective. We're yeah. so confined. And I feel that we need to experience the expansion, right? Mm -hmm. Who we are. And we're yeah. diverse humanity. I mean, incredibly, right? I want to yeah. learn so many languages. Languages should be taught at, you know, you should be able to at least have five languages taught to you if you want to engage with them. Uh, free medical system, like in France. I mean, yes, they have a huge tax debt, the, the government, but you know what? Anyone who shows up, go to the hospital is treated for free. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just, that's just, so that's a good healthcare system. We need to take care of people. Yeah. Um, meditation, it doesn't need to be stigmatized. Mental health, no stigmatized. But I, in that kind of world, there will be no mental health issues because mm -hmm. you will be experiencing, um, you won't have scarcity consciousness. Society will be taking care of you, you know. Yeah. You won't have the stressors, you know. Uh, yes, rich people, billionaires should pay more taxes for this kind of infrastructure. That's just part of how we take care of people, you know. Mm -hmm. That's just yeah. it, it's just normal. I, I, this is not saying, oh, you have no. It's just normal when people can help. People should help. <laughs> yeah, simple. and help a lot, not a little, yeah. but a lot, a lot. Not a little, a lot. Just you know, <laughs> and then a lot of planting of trees, and you know, yes, electric cars or new technology. But technology is part of the future. So, so maybe I'm seeing a fifth element. Whoever sees that film, <laughs> maybe I'm seeing like the perfect, you know, all of that labeled with with fun and joy and and higher values. So that's just incredible. Like, I, I love your world. I love the fact that we're taking care of each other. And at the end of the day, we have to dream it. We have to be it in order to manifest it. So thanks for being bringing that dream. And I think we're moving in that direction because we're talking about it more when it comes to social, when it comes to people writing books about it and people sharing more. So what is your biggest initiative right now? What are the initiatives you feel like, okay, if we do these three to five things, we're going to be good in 10 years. That's a great question. Um, well, first of all, um, 
I think what we're doing right now at the foundation, uh, creating this uh, democratized access mm-hmm. to mental well-being yeah. and aggregating every expert. I mean, my wish is to have every expert in different domains on mental health and mental well-being on this platform mm-hmm. so that they can share their nuggets of wisdom in, in, I would say, snackable content form. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, because as we know, we have to adapt to our times. We, we, we lose our attention span very quickly now, especially our youth. So we need to make the democratized access to, to, to mental well-being. So that's going to be something that's, you know, obviously my, my, one of my dreams so that everyone doesn't feel alone mm-hmm. and, and everyone has a place to go. Um, even if it's a technology platform, but that will enhance in real life communities. So, so that's really, you know, building community, building love in action, never alone, little sanghas and, and, and ambassadorships around the world is, is what, uh, what we're working on. So that's important. And I suppose the next dream is to, when I think when we, we started the conversation by, um, by talking about actually violent, ending violence against women. Um, and so for me, mental well-being and ending violence against women go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, why? Because um, if we were mentally in tune with who we truly are and we had this mental hygiene or we started to start reading the signs in someone around us in the community that might start showing a form of mental distress that could lead to violence or mental Ill- that could lead there, then we would be able to not keep it to ourselves, but we w- would be able to share it with the right people to help that person, but also to make sure that that person has the right treatment so that maybe that person might inflict, might not inflict violence against whether it's a stranger or their partner, you know? So it's really about self-awareness. That's why for me that really they are so connected. Not many people talk about the connection. I do, because if we're all mentally well and stable, why would I want to go and be disrespectful to a woman? Mm -hmm. Just tell me, like, I'm sorry, but that would not happen. It's very or I think it's normalized, to be honest. I think that it's normalized on TV, it's normalized in music. And I think it's a cultural thing, to be honest, because yeah. yes, it's mental, but I also think it's cultural. I just have to say that because it's so disgusting. And I think it's way too normalized, it's way too okay. Um, and I, so I feel like that big responsibility and us taking absolutely is huge. But it's- you're you're right, and 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 coming to that point, which I think you're very very right, um, completely on the same thing as you, um, is our entertainment. So mm-hmm. I'm an actor, right? You said in my bio, I'm I'm putting together my production company. Yes, I have a production company right now. I have in the pipeline several about ten projects that will hopefully happen over the next 10 years. <laughs> but, you know, we, we, as an entrepreneur, there's ups and downs. Don't worry, it's part of the journey. But the point is, is that all of this is conscious content. Mm-hmm. So it's content that is moving us into action and moving us into feeling and experiencing something and empathy. At the end of the day, it's empathy, whether it's for yourself, for the other, for humanity. And, and we, need to, we need to take responsibility. I agree with you. Like mm-hmm. if we don't take responsibility as creators, mm-hmm. as then what are we doing? You know, what are we doing? You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's but, but so, so for me, it's like, it's like this war, right? In Ukraine. I mean, like I'm, I'm hoping this is the war that's going to end all wars, but right now, two months in, we're already bored. Like, you know, people aren't talking about it. So what is this? Why are we not, what is the missing link Mm -hmm. that is not literally (laughs) coming into existence in our humanity right now? There's something that is a huge disconnect. And I think it's because I always go back to be the change you want to see in the world, Gandhi, Mm -hmm. right? I always go back to that. What, it's all about the individual perception to reality. So 
If our collective reality is missing a link, that means each and every one of us is missing a link. So we need a critical mass of people who know the link to create that global transformation for 8 billion people. And, you know, it's not easy. I'm not saying this is all rainbows and unicorns. I love them. But, you know, (laughs) like I love all of that. And that's how I am in, Mm -hmm. in my inner self. But we have to be aware that every part of society is part of the problem. <laughs> As you said, mm-hmm. culture, rap, music, film, this, that, I get it. But we have to start from ourselves. If we're more mentally secure, spiritually in tune, then we might not want to write that kind of stuff. And we might not want to produce that kind of stuff, but you know what? It's going to take a lot of us to do it because there's a trend right now that is entertainment based content that is so poor for our emotional intelligence Mm -hmm. that it's just almost revolting. (laughs) Yeah. And, but the beat, the beat is so trendy and it's like, and that's, what's really getting mass produced right now. And I'm just like, Oh my goodness. And because, you know, you have this incredible, this music, this universal language of, of music and vibrations that are a vibe, but then you have it wrapped around toxic lyrics that are continually infusing it themselves into your consciousness. And it's like, okay, so what do you do? So yeah, I agree. I agree with you. And that's why, you know, in a weird way, Never Alone Artists, when we're interviewing Anneli Chopa, when we're doing Baby Rexer, when we're interviewing Jenny Aiko, you know, we're going into some of those conversations and that's what we hope will kind of, you know, reverberate in that in that ecosystem it's an ecosystem yeah it really is and thank you for the work that you're doing because it's so it's so needed and I feel like the more that we bond together and we make that commitment I'm like okay we see what it is we acknowledge the problem but let's focus on the solution let's pour into the solution let's and when I heard about you I'm like absolutely like I love everything that she's doing solution, 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 every part of your life, every part of what you're doing to give back is, you know, finding the solution for um, sexual violence against women, finding solution for mental health and suicide prevention, finding and being the solution. And so I feel like if more of us say, because I feel like to your point earlier, the reason people get exhausted is because people feel like we're not, we're not, we can't stop the war. Nothing's going to stop it. We feel helpless. Oh, the racial divide. Oh, well, we tried and it's not happening. So people and people give up, but like you're doing, you literally have to dedicate your life to it and to being part of the solution. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to find it. It's like, just do something. And so thank you for doing some, a lot of some things. (laughs) No, I appreciate that. But, but you know, a lot of the, and this is a very little point that I think we should add when you feel that, you know, it's not working and you're an activist and it's not working and you're, you're a small drop in the ocean. Remember, the ocean is in that drop. Okay. Mm-hmm. You matter. And, and, and because you ha- might be having a temporary burnout, take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. Mental well-being is part of you succeeding in your purpose. So take care of yourself. Take that moment. Yes, we can't always be high. We can be low and then we can be in the middle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And yoga, as you know, we're always trying to resist it, that equanimous state because it's like there's so it's so easy for the highs and lows and the dips, but it's like be bringing yourself back to equilibrium and just realizing like, okay, if you're if you're here, you don't have to be here. You exactly. can just slowly make your way back to equilibrium. And I feel like that's what, you know, the well-being and the mental health is about is like, hey, if you're empathetic, you're going to be feeling it every day because we got a lot of things going on. But if you can balance that out with your self-care and well-being, then we can keep just being part of the solution. And then, like you said, that tiny drop, each of us being that tiny drop, you got a big ocean that's really cleansing the planet. And I feel like even though the world stopped for a little while and everything was closed down, it gave us this opportunity to really look within ourselves and see what type of drop 
we want to be. What is your kind of takeaway that you want? Um, if you have a last message for everyone um, before we, we wrap up that you want people to remember. I want you to remember that, that you are a perpetual mystery unfolding in the great adventure of your life. Mm -hmm. And you're never alone. And you will always be so surprised about the next mountain and valley that you will experience in your life. I love that. Thank you so much for your wisdom, <laughs> your positivity, your inspiration, all that you are. We're going to include the links to all your services um, in the show notes. And um, where can people tune in and where can people find you so they can get a little bit more of your inspiration? Oh, that's so sweet. Well, I, I suppose you can find me on, on my Instagram. You can find uh, me actually on our Never Alone um, sites as well and never alone artists you can see a lot so we have our facebook so thing but you can find me on instagram for sure um and and voila and then twitter as well i'm active on twitter as well but but you, you it's more i'm i'm you're gonna laugh so i'm very much very hopeful for this new world um, in the, the metaversing space, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm studying that because I want to make sure mental well-being is active there. So that's yeah. where the Twitter is more about metaverse and mental well-being in, in that space, in the Web3, mm -hmm. which is the new reality soon. Mm, I love that. I look forward to checking it out because I'm, I'm in that world too. I want to um, really link up with other positive activists who are into mindfulness in the metaverse because that's okay. really so we'll be there. We'll be there. We'll be there. We'll be there. <laughs> awesome. Love well, thank it. you so much. I really appreciate you coming on to the show. Everyone go ahead and just check out everything Gabriella Wright is doing because it's absolutely incredible. And if you had some in takeaways from this session um tag her tag me let us know your biggest takeaways if you haven't let, left a review yet go ahead and leave a review and let us know what is your favorite thing you loved about this episode or what is a favorite thing you love about the podcast and until next time love yourself love others and love the world one day at a time one breath at a time peace and love I just want to take a moment to say thank you for being part of the Get Loved Up community. I like to share topics and people making a positive impact in the world, and your feedback means the world to me. If you haven't already left a review, please leave a five-star review and let me know what you want to hear more of on the show. I'm here for you, and together, we're making the world a better place, one day at a time, one show at a time. Thank you for listening.